Hello everyone, I am Linda P. Joseph, Assistant Professor for the Department of English, Carmel College, Mala, Kerala. My paper is titled, Add Narratives and Evolving Perspectives, a Reading of the Emerging Culture of Inclusivity. I have taken for study 20 Indian advertisements that have taken a very inclusive stance with regard to representation. Let's take a look at it. Why talk about narratives? Simply because they form an innate core of our existence, informing our perceptions on diverse aspects of life. Narrativizing a context is our way of communicating the reality. Why specifically advertisements? Because they are an integral part of our culture. The intent of advertising is to convince and persuade the potential consumer. So it's very important that you're able to communicate effectively and create a sense of credibility. So most of the advertisements would go for unique rendition of narratives. Let's have a look at what Calkins, one of the pioneers of modern advertising, told about advertisements and I quote, in them we can trace our sociological history, the rise and fall of fats and crazes, changing interest and taste in food, clothes, amusements and vices, a panorama of life as it was left more informing than old diaries or crumbling tombstones, one of the reasons why we subject advertisements to study. So why is it important to make a stance? Because these narratives can be seen as mirrors held to a society reflecting the sociocultural transformations of the nation at large. But most of these advertisements comply to the normative heterosexual patriarchal scripts for representation. And it's time for change. There are a few advertisers and brands that have made inclusivity, inclusivity as the maxim in defining their position in the industry. And here we have a few of them. Before going further, we need to understand the stereotypes on the term gender. Gender is understood as a performance or a series of performance based on socially constructed scripts. It can learn, and this learning starts from infancy, which often results in differential treatment. How we treat a boy child is different from the way we treat or raise a girl child. So according to Millet, she says that this gender difference, and I quote, have an essentially cultural rather than biological basis. So this particular scenario that you see around effectively and conveniently reinforces women's subordination. According to Millet, women were often taken as an quote, passive, ignorant, docile, emotional health needs for men, unquote. Whereas men seem to exude energy and passion, they show interest in social matters, they're very strong and adept in decision making. So for long, a woman's active space remained the indoor, whereas men literally ruled the outdoors. So here we have the first ad for analysis, PNG laundry brand Ariel released two advertisements in 2016 and 19 respectively for the campaign Share the Load, addressing the gender inequality in doing household chores. So this ad asks this question, is laundry only a woman's job? So in the first ad, if you see, it portrays a father who realizes the gravity of wrong example that he has set in not helping his wife ever at household jobs. And now that his own daughter, who is a married working woman, does the same in her home, it makes him realize how much she is struggling to balance without help. So he resolves to make a change by helping his wife in sharing the load, starting with laundry. In the second ad, you can find a mother who gets a call from her daughter saying that uh, she will have to give up her job because her husband is not equipped to help her with the heaping household job. So this particular instance make the mother realize that she is partially responsible for propagating the patriarchal constructs on gender roles which make you equip your daughters with household jobs but never your son. So the change begins when she gets her own son to do his own uh, laundry and the ad closes with the message, are we teaching our sons what we are teaching our daughters? So these two advertisements make us aware of the need to relook at the way that we are raising our children. Now looking at the next ad, it's about how notions of masculinity and femininity evolve as product of nurture. It's this process of socialization where we inadvertently introduce our children to gender stereotypic language when we say boys don't cry, blue is the color for boys, pink for girls and the rest. So there is this uh, unsaid gender dynamic, a power dynamic which is at work here. So urging for a very constructive change, Flipkart released its ad in 2018 with the tagline, let's raise a generation of equals. So this ad talks about the need to provide congenial uh, environment for growth to children irrespective of the gender. 
The narrative shows instance of children growing up uninhabited by gender constraints. You find different instances where the boys and girls play with car. Both of them engage in household jobs. Both of them wear pink and blue because they like the color and a number of similar instances. So this ad closes where you find the children urging the parents to raise them as they were born. That is as equals. In a similar line, Tata T released two ads in 2017, voicing a very pertinent lesson. Inequality gets learned, equality needs teaching. So in the first ad, you find a father who expresses his disappointment over his son coming second to a girl in the race. Obviously, coming second to a girl is almost equal to not winning at all. So the child is shown as completely oblivious of the larger implication of the statement that his father made. Similarly, in the second act, you find a daughter seeking permission to play out with uh, his, her brother, which is refused by her mother solely for the reason that she's a girl and she's meant to help her with domestic chores. The boy is obviously encouraged to go out and play. So this is an instance of blatant gender bias that you inadvertently or not teach your children. So these ads vouch for uh, the need to teach gender sensitivity to our kids. Sexism is rampant. Back in 1949, Boer mentioned how economically men and women almost formed two castes. It is an obvious fact that women are often underrepresented in spheres of decision making, receive lower wages for similar work, have less access to productive assets like education, skills, property, and employment, even though the scenario is seeing a, a, a gradual shift or a change. A woman's body often becomes a very problematic thing. It's often perceived as a site of fragility subjected to countless gazes, which would affect the consistent expression of her subjectivity and individuality. The body of a woman would become the context or a background that informs how another perceives her actions and words. The same thing does not go for a man who does not require uh, to affirm that he belongs to a certain sex. So when living under patriarchy, the reality of her body is an inescapable fact for women. So most of the ad narratives go for this cliche formula when depicting gender. For them, women should be the prim, fair, delicate, docile homemakers or girlfriend figures, whereas men can be tough, ultra-masculine and always on the go. These are unsound depictions far from reality. Similarly, on ads that addresses institutions of family and marriage, they often comply to this patriarchal script, where man assumes autonomy and woman dependence. Addressing these issues, Biba released three ads in 2015, 16 and 18 respectively as part of Change is Beautiful campaign. Here you have changed the convention uh, which showcases the typical arranged marriage scenario till the part where the father of the girl starts quizzing his prospective son-in-law about his culinary skills. So this is a jab at the patriarch construct of how cooking is a woman's job, that's a woman's terrain and it is instead this ad posits the uh, fact that cooking is in fact a basic life skill that should be learned irrespective of your gender. Now Change the Conversation offers a take on dowry where it features a father who understands how retrogressive the idea of asking a dowry is when a family enters the daughter to his care. Similarly in another ad of Biba which is titled Change for Progress uh, a guy who was actually boasting over his uh, prospects for future only to be taken aback by a question that a man asked him uh, about the need of furthering his studies because after all he will have to settle down and run the home. So this is a statement that is typically thrown at women who want to further uh, in their education. So the best at work ad by Mia in 2016 portrayed six women across various professions who confront bias and sexism at the workplace but they graciously chose to move on delivering the best at work. So this ad portrays how the presence of women who appear smart, who is vocal or who can take care of themselves or who pass dirty jokes, shocks the chauvinist in the man. Similarly, Mintra's ethnic wear brand Anok released in 2015 the ad Calling uh, as part of the Baldur's Beautiful campaign which portrayed how pregnancy often is seen to render women as handicapped, negatively impacting their productivity at work. So in this particular ad, you find the central character who is refused the rightful promotion that she deserves and she boldly walks away to start her own enterprise. 
Titan Raga's Mom by Choice at by uh, in 2017 actually celebrates strong driven women presents the image of an unconventional mother who pursued her career and studies even at the age of 45 so this ad promotes a well thought through perception that motherhood is in fact a choice and not exactly a sacrifice advertisements often promote beauty narratives that are unidimensional in nature which uh, kind of uh, chose an obsession for fair skin, lustrous hair, or even hourglass shape. There is an underrepresentation of diversity in skin tones, body size, and shape. As part of the Change the Rhyme campaign, Blush and Dow in 2017 released their ad. In this particular ad, they set against the background score of chubby cheeks and rosy legs, a nursery rhyme that inadvertently ingrains an inaccurate perception about beauty in the end psyche. And you have this ad just opposing. The visuals of young girls who engage in diverse uh, sports like table tennis, gymnastics, wrestling, and archery, they uh, question the monopoly of beauty narratives through the solid representation of these girls who actually toil, they uh, bloody, and uh, they sweat. Again, you have uh, Dove uh, who released another ad as part of Let's Break the Rules of Beauty campaign bringing together women from different walks of life of all ages shapes and skin tones effusing confidence in exactly uh, who they are so these are the major beauty narratives that get propagated by advertisement so what happens to the man in this gender script they are still purchases of material things assertive and always expected to be in charge and times projected as uh, intimidating so this conditioning of men in accordance with the gender script prevails and it gives a peripheral representation. So rarely do arts represent uh, the image of an evolving man who is not exactly shy to embrace, uh, who does not feel shy or who doesn't shy away from embracing his vulnerability and weakness. Fortunately, we do have a few brands that stand out or uh, that even break free of the stereotypes. The Man Company in 2019 brought out uh, an ad as part of its campaign to bring out the gentleman in you, starring Aishman Purana. Well, he gives a poetic rendition of who exactly is a, a gentleman. And according to him, as part of his rendition, it is evident that gentlemanliness has more to do with one's attitude and mindset rather than gender. Again, Modern Mind for Modern Man, advertised by Sleek in 2019, shows a father's and duo engaging in kitchen tasks. The ad is not torn by any explicit musing on gender stereotypes itself but positions the man as very much comfortable and self-assured in doing these chores traditionally or conventionally accorded to women. So this advertisement promotes a lifestyle where the complicity of gender stereotype itself seems non-existent. Now, It Takes Two by Pampers in 2016, uh, in fact, deliberates on the importance of shared parental involvement in baby chores to ensure the child's uh, cognitive, social and emotional well-being. So this ad portrays both uh, parents involved in taking care of the baby. This ad is in fact a counter-narrative on the outmoded impression that nurturing is in fact a mother's, nurturing a baby is in fact a mother's sole responsibility. Now Butler opines that gendered behaviors are not natural but imposed by normative heterosexuality. It's in fact an illusion uh, which is maintained by the prominent power structures. Identity therefore is fluid, it's free floating rather than being fixed. That's the visibility of cures. However, you have this heterosexism which deems heterosexuality as natural and homosexual as deviant and that in effect generates a gender dimorphism. So this intense homophobic attitude is in fact the result of an anxiety that we have about the other. This other would constitute those individuals who exhibit sexual tendencies or uh, behavioral patterns that stand contrary to what has been biologically assigned to them. So we call it as aberrant or abnormal. Now countering this conception, we have two advertisements. One by Fast Track, uh, come out of the closet ad as part of the Move On campaign in 2013 and announce 2015 ad the visit as part of Ball This Beautiful. Now, these two advertisements literally make a statement on the taboo topic. These ads advocate for a more uh, inclusivity, inclusivity towards differences. Rather than prescribing a way of living, they voice the pertinence of living an uninhabited life, urging all of us, particularly the youth, 
to challenge the constructed labels on gender and sexuality and identity. India holds centuries long relationship with transgenders known as Hijras. They used to be revered in ancient India. They are all already referred to in uh, Hindu religious texts for their loyalty. And during the Mughal era, uh, they used to hold positions of power. They are often sought out for blessings during important religious ceremonies. Following British colonization, these people were relegated as social outcasts who often had to resort to begging and prostitution and dancing to make their livelihood. So despite the 2014 and 18 verdict, uh, there still prevails a transphobic uh, stigma where these people are subjected to gendered violence, discrimination and harassment in public place. So in this light, Touch of Care, uh, which was an ad campaign by Wix in 2017, this marked a very momentous departure from the accepted notion on gender roles, particularly that of motherhood. So this ad is inspired by the true story of the transgender activist Gauri Savant, who in fact features in this ad, who raises an orphan girl all on herself. Now, uh, you find Gayatri, who is this girl child in this particular ad, reminiscing about her mother. And we have this image of a typical mother in, in our mind. It's only in the latter part of this advertisement that we realize it's in fact this transgender who was her mother or foster mother. So this ad was able to touch the viewers because they kind of redefined the definition of family and motherhood. Motherhood is associated with care and not merely the biological process of giving birth. Despite the fact that explicit discrimination of violence upon the person of transgender is a criminal offense, uh, we have not yet broadened our mindset to accommodate these these people and we are in one way or another complicit in propagating covertly discrimination towards them. So Free the Road campaign by Ralph Cotias in 2019 released as part of Independence Day celebration portrays a transgender who had to face a number of discrimination. The best that she was waiting for closed its roads, uh, ro roads right on her face and the people that she sought uh, lift did not help her out. One person deemed it okay even to lend her money. And this whole instance emotionally exhausted her till she finds a man among multitude who had the simple honesty to help her out by giving a right. So this ad closes with the message, the wheel of change should remain, should not remain on the paper, they should ride the streets too, advocating for a more inclusive, positive change. So all of these ads have given us a very progressive, inclusive counter or even corrective narratives and they have very effectively questioned or either raised our consciousness to the reality out there. It's a, a lot more to think about and there is a lot more to achieve but changes are happening and changes would always uh, be welcomed. Thank you for patiently listening uh, to my presentation.